Human Comfort In this video I will be discussing the thermodynamics of human body human thermal comfort its factors indices like effective temperature and comfort chart let's start thermal comfort is defined as that state of mind which expresses satisfaction with the thermal environment similar to a thermal engine our bodies consume food and converts its chemical energy continuously into heat and work this process of conversion is called metabolism and its rate which varies with individual and situations is called metabolic rate thermodynamically speaking the human comfort is achieved when the heat produced by the metabolism of human body is equal to the sum of the heat dissipated to the surroundings and the heat stored in the body by raising the temperature of body tissues this equation here represents the same mathematically evaporative heat loss is due to the evaporation of water from the skin surface and also water vapor lost during breathing this loss is always present be it a hot or a cold environment in a hot environment there will be heat gain due to radiation conduction and convection while in a cold environment the bodies will lose heat by these means when this equation is not satisfied the body temperature may rise or fall from its normal or neutral condition for example while fasting our metabolic rate drops in this condition if we are exposed to cold environment or high draft air we would feel colder than usual because qs drops due to low metabolic rate and also the value of qr and qc are high in the given conditions the metabolic rate of a human body depends on physiological factors like age health gender etc it also depends on physical activity and environmental factors metabolic rate increases with physical activity and exercise better digestion also leads to a higher metabolic rate a lean person has a higher metabolic rate compared to a person with larger fat storage a growing child or a young adult also has a higher metabolic rate compared to a older person metabolic rate drops during sleep these are only few of the factors that influence metabolic rate human beings are homeothermic that is regardless of external influence a stable internal body temperature is maintained in case of humans this temperature is 37 degrees celsius when this thermoregulation does not perform well the effect may range from slight discomfort to being lethal there are two mechanisms of temperature control in human beings the first mechanism is vasomotor control in hot environment the blood vessel carrying blood to the skin dilate or expand increasing blood flow to the skin this increases the heat loss to the environment by conduction and convection resulting in a drop in body temperature on the other hand in a cold environment the blood vessels contract reducing blood flow to the surface and hence reducing heat loss to the environment by conduction and convection this is the reason for our pale appearance in winters the second mechanism is pseudomotor control which regulates the sweat production and lowers the body temperature by evaporative heat loss effectiveness of this mechanism is limited in a humid environment where evaporation reduces human comfort depends on a number of factors the physiological factors include the person's age gender state of health among others the clothing that we wear acts as a barrier against heat gain or loss then there are environmental factors namely dry bulb temperature relative humidity air velocity etc apart from these there are other factors like non uniform heating or cooling air draft etc out of these many factors temperature humidity air motion and purity are more dominant and also under greater control of the operator or air conditioning designers in an enclosed space 
For example, the type of clothing or the metabolic rate of a person entering a room is a variable and not under the control of the operations department. The four major factors affecting human comfort are combined into a single sensory index called effective temperature. One important thing to note here is that it is defined in a noise-free environment. The noise level should be within the limits allowed by the activity that is carried out in an enclosed space. For example, a classroom, a recording studio, a theater, a living room, etc. would have their own tolerance for noise. The noise to an extent depends on the air velocity. Effective temperature can also be defined as a temperature in an environment with 100% humidity and no air movement which will induce the same level of comfort as in the given situation. This is the effective temperature chart. It shows that human comfort remains invariant of the temperature of the enclosed space if humidity and air motion vary. Say we have air at a given dry bulb temperature and a given wet bulb temperature. The line joining these two crosses these curves at given points. Now to find the effective temperature, we have to consider the air velocity line where these two intersect. This point here would give us the effective temperature for the given air velocity. Now the change in humidity would change the wet bulb temperature. Simultaneously, if we vary the velocity, we can achieve the same effective temperature without any change in the dry bulb temperature. Here we have the comfort chart which was first published by Ashray in 1950. It provides the percentage of people feeling comfortable at various effective temperature in summer and winter. Though it is one of the most precise and scientific form of measurement, but still, due to variability in individual preferences of warmth and cold, it serves only as an approximate standard of comfort. It gives an idea of the effective temperature in summer and winter at which majority of the people will feel comfortable. The optimum effective temperature depends on all these factors mentioned here, namely climatic and seasonal difference, duration of occupancy, clothing, age and gender, activity, radiant heat, latitude, shock effect and there can be some more. It is usually observed that people from colder regions prefer lower effective temperature than people residing in warmer climates. A relationship exists between the indoor optimum effective temperature and the average outdoor effective temperature. Occupancy time in an enclosed space also has an influence on the optimum effective temperature. As discussed earlier, the clothing influences the rate of heat, loss or gain and hence influences the optimum effective temperature. It has been observed that people on an average above 40 require an optimum effective temperature which is 0.5 degrees Celsius higher than in younger people. This may be due to the drop in metabolic rate. On an average, it has been observed that women require an optimum effective temperature 0.5 degrees Celsius higher than men. Physical activity increases metabolic rate and thus more heat needs to be dissipated. This drops the optimum effective temperature. Each body radiates some heat. Say we have a sparsely filled theater. The amount of heat radiated by the occupants is less than when it gets packed. This would require a drop in the effective temperature to make the occupants comfortable. Latitude also plays an important role. As we move from the poles to the equator, usually a rise in optimum effective temperature is desired. The sudden entry or exit from indoors to outdoors, when there is significant difference in temperature, a shock is felt. It is more pronounced during summer. You may watch other videos of the series by clicking on these thumbnails. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and leave your comments in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.